What's going on everybody? Today I want to make a kind of weird video. This will be a one-off. It's not going to be part of a series or anything. But I want to kind of go over my thought process as I am practicing for the speedrun of Octo Expansion. As you guys may have seen in other videos, I am planning on doing speedruns of Octo Expansion once again and reaching a top level, possibly getting world record pace. But that would take a lot of work and a lot of practice to get there, and I have to make sure I'm using my time efficiently. So, uh, what are some methods that I use personally in order to maximize the amount of practice I get for the time? So, first off is identifying levels that may be problems in the future or problems where I'm losing a significant amount of time. For example, something like this level ao4 this level is a baller so there's not really much i can do at all in order to go faster in this level because i'm just running forward and going up walls a couple times and whatever um the cycles are a little bit off from what they would be because i spent some time in, uh, in the menu but that doesn't really matter as you can see like the, my point still stands i don't really need to practice ao4 it's not really a good use of my time even if i get absolutely perfect at this level it's not really going to make a huge difference you know if i save two seconds here whatever but if i practice Matchmaster, this level jo2 can lead to a ton of time save because learning a faster route and being able to aim faster can save a lot more time closer to around 20 or 30 seconds if i were to relearn this so going through and you know looking at the fast route and learning where all the shots are and doing all this from scratch is going to be a lot more effective use of my time because if i can grind this level then I can get it perfect as you can see my route is already pretty bad but that doesn't really matter i'm just kind of using this as an example that's probably a better example you can see i'm like i'm already low ink you know i'm not really thinking this out i don't have any ink refills i don't even know where the ink refill is so priority number one is looking through the levels and seeing which ones are you having trouble with are you having trouble with girl power are you dying in girl power well, just learn it enough so that you're not dying because girl power is an auto scroller. You're not going to lose time in girl power so long as you do it right. Uh, something like the boss fight, the shower boss. If you need to, uh, if you need to practice this until you can get the cycles consistent, then do that. Uh, I personally am not that bad at this boss, so I would probably not practice that very much. If you look at the eight ball level. If you're not getting the cycle at the end, that's eight seconds, you know, make sure you practice it until you can get that cycle every single time. If you are doing the target buster station, uh, then make sure you're getting all of those strats correct too. You know, there's so many levels where you have the potential to lose time to movement and you need to make sure every single one of those levels is up to par. But when it comes to levels like no whammy station, you don't need to do this. This is also why I think that doing no reset runs is not a very efficient way to get practice in, even though it does give you run pressure at the end of the run, if that matters to you at all. But ultimately, what's really going to make you effective at speedrunning and practicing is doing the levels only that cause you trouble. The chance of me messing up in damageless level is a lot higher than me messing up in defend the orb right after it. After you've gone over what you think you need to do in order to uh, practice, which levels you picked out uh, that you want to practice, next is to simply look at the world record. Honestly, I did a React video to this if you want to go back on that on my channel. But um, you look at the world record, find where they do the level, and just copy their movement. It's, it, it's weird, but it works. Most of the time, if you just copy their movement, like for example, I'll try, I will do this real time for you guys. Um, let's look at this level here. This section is the only part that I did not know about. This is something completely new to me. I had not seen this before. Throws a splat bomb and that kills the Octoling. So I am going to try to recreate how this happens. So let's look at how this works again. So in the cutscene, before the cutscene, I should say, goes to the left of the tree about a squid's length away from the tree, throws a splat bomb and walks to the left. 
So what I'm thinking is all of that is important. I'm going to go to the, to the right tree. I'm going to throw the splat bomb on the floor in front of the pillar, and I'm going to walk to the left, and then hopefully the octoling is going to fall off the left side of the platform and then walk into the splat bomb. And let's see if I can learn it. So it looks like about a squid length away from the tree. Let's go ahead and go through and jump. I'm going to let the cutscene play so it's the same as any percent. Throw a splat bomb, walk to the right, dead. Perfect. Easy as that. So as you can see, just from watching the world record run, all I did was look at a new strat and say, wow, let me copy exactly what that runner did. And that's the first step for any new strat learning. Look at the strat and see if you can reverse engineer it yourself. Because what I, one mistake that I see a lot of people doing is they play through a level, like they say, oh, cool, you just throw a splat bomb and it works. And then they don't go through the trouble of understanding why it works. And then one of two things will happen. Either it'll work for them the first time and then it'll stop working in runs leading to frustration or it won't work at all. And then you're stuck asking questions in the discord like, hey, I tried doing this thing and it didn't work. What gives? The game's broken, blah, 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 blah. And yes, that's all that is true. But, you know, you need to be able to figure those things out on your own. Okay, I'm going to put my mind in the in the brain of a beginner runner. So let's say that I'm looking at the world record run and I'm trying to learn this new strat. So I see two important things. Okay, so he starts the cutscene and then he throws a splat bomb and it kills the octoling and everything's cool. So I'm going to try that for myself. So I'm going to start the cutscene. And then I'm going to throw a splat bomb. And it didn't work. What gives? Nintendo, fix your game. Maybe it's something different. Maybe there's something more to this that makes it so that it could work better. So let's try it again. So it looks like he's to the right side of the pillar. That may be important. And it also looks like after he throws a splat bomb, he walks to the left. So let's try both of those things. So we go to the right tree, jump through the cutscene. Weird. Throw a splat bomb. And then walk to the left a little bit and it slightly didn't work. Walk to the right and then it worked. Okay, so now I'm figuring out, well, all I have to do here is jump through the cutscene, walk over here to the right, because what the Octoling wants to do is go the opposite direction that I am. So what a beginner runner might do is say, oh, I'm just going to walk forward because, you know, the goal's up there, so I have to walk forward. But if you walk forward, the Octoling is going to go up this way, which is what he did for me. So you have to be really careful and very precise about why <laughs> you have to be very precise about why these things work. Let's find another example of a level that I can learn a new strat on. So let's try bump an eight ball station. This level is notoriously hard because of the very ending. The ball can kind of go anywhere. So my first step is looking at what the world record does and how I can replicate it. So jumps up here, and then as soon as he lands, throws a burst bomb right at the eight ball, and that'll stop its momentum. So let me try doing that. And it works. So once I smack all those guys around, uh, hopefully that ball doesn't do that. And I'll try this again to make sure that I understand. Then as long as I get here, it can go right to the end super quickly. And that's way better than having to try and catch the ball after it's bouncing everywhere. So now that I've gone over how to learn new strats from the world record video, let me go into how you practice your movement and know that you're making progress. And yes, it involves a timer. Obviously, it involves a timer. So here I have a timer on screen. And let's go over to the... Uh, box uh, master shape level the box level this guy so first of all you have to be very diligent about this something that you have to understand about practicing versus doing it in a run is that in a run you can't skip the cutscenes so you have to choose a point that is always going to be consistent between the run and between practice for example if i just start the level and this is practice i could start the timer as soon as I jump through this turnstile. But that's not a very good way to practice 
because if I look at the run, he has to watch the cutscene. So that means that every time I practice, I have to watch the cutscene too, and that's a waste of time. So I need to find some place where it's consistent that I can start the timer and say what matters while I'm practicing. What parts of the run matters while I'm practicing? So let's continue watching for a little bit. And we will see that there is a super jump. So let's look at this again. So he's watching the cutscene. And there's a super jump. So one of the places that I can try and start the timing of comparison. And th the whole point of this is to make a comparison, by the way. The whole point is to make a comparison between what the world record is doing and how fast I do it in practice. So we're watching the cutscene. We're watching the cutscene. I can skip the cutscene and then I'm going to start the timer as soon as you blast off. Okay, cool. I found my section. Okay, we found the section. That's where I'm going to be comparing. And let's see how much time this takes versus how much time it'll take me. Okay, and then obviously I can stop the timer as soon as the boxes are cleared and the timer is done because we're going to end in the same spot. So I'm probably not going to lose time on the way to the end of the level. So 55 seconds is my target. So from the time I blast off in the super jump to the time I finish hitting the last box should be uh, the time that it, you know, should be about 55 seconds. So that's my target. That's why I need to be practicing. So let's go back into practice and see if I can hit that. What I'm really trying to do is just get a baseline. I'm not trying to be super fast or anything. I'm just trying to do it the way that I would if I was doing it. Okay, well, as you can see, that takes a ton of time. That took me a minute and 42 seconds in order to complete, which means I have a ton of practice to do. So now I can write this level down as a place to say, wow, I need to practice the new route. I need to practice the new aiming. I need to get through this until I can get around the sub one minute time. Because if I were to do it like that every single run, I'm going to be losing a minute and I cannot afford to lose an entire minute in a speed run like that. So far, we have gone over how to pick your levels. We've gone over how to learn strats. We've gone over how to compare against the world record run. Now I want to go over troubleshooting. So say there's a level that no one else seems to have trouble on. <clears throat> say there's a level that no one else seems to have trouble on, but you just can't get it right. You never shoot the shots right. They always move in the wrong direction. Maybe everything is going wrong and you just need to learn what's going on. Like what's going on with this boss fight that's making me miss something. So let's go over a common tactic with that. So with this boss, uh, let's say I'm trying to learn the first phase or I'm doing runs and I go through the first phase and he just continuously messes me up, right? So I do like fire, fire, and then uh, he went that way. Well, what can I do differently? You know, what? what's something that I can do differently to try and make that, that section a little bit better? Or maybe I go through this part, you know, um... I shoot him here, then I shoot him again, then I shoot a third and a fourth. Okay, that worked. That's probably not as much of a problem as the first phase was. For example, maybe I get to the third phase and he's doing some wacky dackies. Like going over this way. And then I, I fire a lot because I'm just good at the game and you should all revel in my presence. But we're going to go back and check out what's going wrong in that first phase. See if there's anything that I can try in the first phase in order to make that a little bit more palatable. So let's go into the world record and check what do they do. Well, like I said earlier, 
everything the world record does has a purpose. Every single movement has a purpose that they have gone through and learned on their own or from the community to make anything a little bit more consistent. So let's see what they do here. They're traveling straight at the Octo Shower. Shoots one bullet as soon as they can. Okay. And then fires the second bullet. They know it's going to be there. So I can probably try to replicate that. And the third one looks like he's missing and he does. So there may be a reason they did that. Maybe the Octa Shower usually goes that way and it just went to that went to the left direction for some reason. But it seems like they're having the same problem. So maybe this is just something that's inconsistent that I just have to deal with. But let's go through the level a couple more times and see if I can fix it. <clears throat> Let's head back into the level and see if I can fix that first phase problem based on what I learned from watching the more record run. So let's go down here. And we're going to try exactly that. We're going to walk forward. We're going to shoot it. We're going to shoot him again and then aim pre-aim. And that worked out. So it looks like they were onto something when they did that fire, that pre-fire over to the right of the boss. And like I said, maybe it's inconsistent and maybe there's something that I have to work on there, but it seems like it's not that bad. If you pick Remember the Fight, it is going to send you to the first section of the escape sequence so you can play it over again. Unfortunately, there is no level picker for the sequence, but let me show you a good way to practice these individually. So let's say that I I have section one down. Section one, super easy. I play Metal Gear, whatever. I don't need to practice it. All I have to do is death abuse because it is going to let me skip as soon as I die five times. So I can just jump off a bunch of times and then skip the section if I don't want to do it. This does take a long time and it is kind of boring, but when you really want to practice and you want to get to a certain specific section, then you can do that. Whoa, that's crazy. I got the section two. Now that I'm in section two, I am able to practice what I want to practice. Say there's like the ink rail section right before Octoshot skip. I, and I want to practice that. And then, you know, I get to this section, it's pretty consistent. Let me just try all this again. You can just go back and die again. And once you've had your fill, of course, you can do this two more times or just wait until your meter is built back up whenever you're done and move on to the next phase. So we're heading on to phase three. And now we can, I can show you another little secret in practicing so unfortunately all the sections have these pesky little things called checkpoints and the checkpoints aren't necessarily consistent every time you do them and that's a big problem because you need the cycle to be consistent and then, oh man i died and now the cycle is awful what can i do well I could sit at the checkpoint and wait every time for the cycle to be kind of consistent to what it's like in 90%. But something else I can do is if I go into the pause menu, you don't want to go back to Central Station because that'll send you all the way back to the escape sequence. What you're going to do is imagine Inkopolis. And that sounds really weird. If you're, if you're leaving all the way out, surely it's going to take you back to the train. But it doesn't. When I go back in the Deep Sea Metro, it will take me back to where I was, which is the very start of Section 3. But it's not going to take me to the checkpoint. It's going to take me to where it would normally be in any percent. And another thing at the start here that I will point out that is also very important to make sure. You cannot skip this cutscene in any percent. You cannot skip any cutscenes in any percent. So if it says skip, don't do it. The cycles are going to be messed up. Okay. Now I got that out of the way. Then you should be good to continue practicing this now last thing i'll say uh, before we get out or one one last thing i'll say about the escape sequence this is another really good thing to learn how to chunk for practice because you can just remember straight from here and say remember the fight boom start the timer and then that's your comparison 
you can make little splits for that escape sequence and then go through it exactly the same way you would in eight percent and see if you can uh see if you can beat your best time and go faster that's a good way of preparing yourself for the end of the run so if you guys have any other questions about practice then let me know i'll be happy to answer them or make a follow-up video as i am practicing and if you want to watch practice live on stream if i'm doing that then go ahead and follow my twitch channel or if you want to just keep up to date with the videos i'm uploading subscribe to the channel or ring the notification bell or do whatever the other cool kids are doing to recap everything we learned in this video make sure that when you watch the world record and try it out yourself you're doing everything perfectly consistent uh make sure that you don't skip cutscenes when you're practicing because it will mess up how you would do it in any percent when you're practicing use a timer so that you can easily track your progress and how fast you're doing things and if you need to update strats and if you have any troubleshooting, of course, the Discord is always available and there's a ton of people who know a lot about the game, like myself, who can help you out with those sort of problems. If you're having them, just make sure you have specific questions. Specific questions is a secret to improving at speedruns. Communities love specific questions and they hate generic questions. And it may not seem like a big deal, but if you go into a speedrun Discord and you say something like, how do I start speedrunning? They're going to be like, bro, come on, get a grip. Whoops. I just tapped the microphone. But if you go in and you say, hey, I've practiced the shower boss a ton of times. And I tried this strat that I saw in the world record. Why isn't it working? Here's a clip of what I'm doing. Then the community is going to be like, yo, 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 yes, I know exactly what you're talking about because it happened to me too. Here's what you have to do, yada, yada, yada. Specific questions is very important. So make sure you're spending the time at least to learn how the game works by yourself. If you just continuously ask questions and have things explained to you, you're going to be falling behind because you're going to lose that valuable information that you would learn otherwise by just doing it yourself. Anyway, that'll be it for the video and I'll see you next time.